What's up, everybody? Welcome. Today, we're going to be going over some more of YouTube's most disturbing videos, including a video that is apparently linked to a disappearance and another video that is almost a step by step instruction manual on how to steal human bones. So if any of that interests you, first off, maybe seek some help because that's a little messed up. What the fuck is wrong with you? But other than that, um, that can wait until after you watch this. We also have a couple other episodes. If you guys haven't checked those out, this is like the fourth one, I think. So if not, I'll link them somewhere up here. And yeah, let's just get right into it. Up first is High Walter. High Walter, also known as High Walter, it's me, Patrick, was an American YouTuber who was speculated to be a person responsible for a disappearance of a Caleb Berg. This channel uploaded one video titled High Walter, I Got a New Girlfriend Today, that was dedicated to Walter, which is Patrick's friend, Patrick being the actual man in the videos. The video begins with Patrick saying, Hi Walter, and he starts talking about a girl that he met at the mall. He explains that he went shopping with her and said that she bought a ton of clothes. He also explains that they went to buy jewelry and that she bought a necklace, which he says, Patrick says, is the most amazing necklace he has ever seen in his life. He explains that they got tired and he brought her back to his place. He says that she hates cameras, but uh, he will show her his cameras anyways. After that, it actually switches to the next scene where he opens the door to show his new girlfriend, who is actually kidnapped, screaming and crying. He goes inside the room, closing the door as she screams more, and then the video just abruptly ends. Now, later in 2011, this video had to be involved with the case of Kayla Berg, who was a 15-year-old girl that disappeared on August 11th in 2009, which is the same year and around the same time when the video was made. She was allegedly last seen with her brother's friend who claimed to have dropped her off at an ex-boyfriend's house in Wausau, Wisconsin, six days passed before she was reported missing, and the building that she was left at was actually just a vacant house. So it wasn't an ex-boyfriend's house or anything, it was just a vacant house that this guy apparently dropped her off at. And yeah, this video, uh, a lot of people was thinking that, oh my god, this is literally her, this is a real video that people just posted online, this is crazy. Now, the circumstances surrounding the nature of her disappearance are very unclear. Authorities couldn't find conclusive evidence that she was murdered, and speculation of her being a runaway was later dismissed as she failed to contact her loved ones in any sort of time. Like, she was missing for six days before she was actually reported missing. She never contacted her family, uh, anybody that knew her, friends, nothing. So, basically, people were thinking that she wasn't just a runaway, and they couldn't really prove that it was a murder or anything like that, so... Things were looking a little unclear at this point. So the connection with Patrick's video is basically this video was uploaded two months after her first disappearance. She wore a red spaghetti strap top, dark blue hooded sweatshirt, blue jeans, tan low heeled sandals, and a silver necklace at the time of her disappearance. While in the video, she was wearing a spaghetti strap top, but it appears to be almost like a pink color and she might be wearing blue jeans. So people were thinking, oh, she's kind of wearing a lot of the same stuff. It was a lot of speculation at this point, okay? Um, people are basically just seeing that the video uh, came out two months later, three months later. Basically, correlation does not equal causation. Shout out to Mr. Manuel from high school. He taught me that shit, and listen, I remember that ever since. Just because two things happen in succession does not mean one had to do with the other. So this is basically a perfect case for that. And the whole connection with their video was actually debunked. The person in this video, Patrick, whose name isn't actually Patrick, was investigated by Intego Police Department in 2016, and it was revealed that the video didn't have any connection with Caleb Berg, which means that obviously the video was staged clearly. I mean, come on, people were doing anything on the internet back then, even today, you know what I mean? Do anything for views, so. I do not doubt for a second that this was staged and I think people were just more so going off the fact that they were both slightly wearing the same type of outfit and just running on that. So, Up next is The Illusion of Bias. Illusion of Bias is a short film directed by Alexander Bizarsky. The film centers around a girl who, upon having a brain tumor surgically removed, becomes unable to perceive her own face. Originally uploaded to YouTube by MindSea based back on June 5th in 2009, the film's subject is a 10-year-old girl diagnosed with a brain tumor. Luckily, uh, the tumor is able to be removed, however, not without a giant cost. Due to the tumor's early removal, the girl loses all perception of her own face, which is actually portrayed by a featureless, blank expanse of just flesh. The girl dreams of being able to see her own face and then she wakes up and after the surgery concludes and she's fully awake, she's actually 
not happy anymore. She, this is replaced with repulsion and paranoia. Basically, she runs to the mirror and she looks to reflection and she's just disgusted. And then basically every day she just wakes up and pukes everywhere because of she's disgusted. Um, soon you find out that this is actually still within a dream. It's almost sort of like Inception and she's just constantly dreaming. And I don't know. I don't really understand the entire meaning of this. I guess it's just the illusion of bias, literally what the title is. But I don't know. Maybe I'm a little too dumb to understand the full premise of this. This is like a little not a great one to watch. Next up is Video Dating Tape. Video Dating Tape is a video uploaded to YouTube back on March 24th in 2017. This is the uploader's only video and the person that actually uploaded the video is not the person in the video. The video description reads, Found this inside a VCR I got at a car boot sale. Sorry for the bad quality, I think there was something wrong with the tape. Now the video itself begins with a man going by the name of Tony who says that he is an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur businessman and part-time adventurer. He starts stating reasons why he wants a girl to be with. My career has afforded me a luxury lifestyle and I'm looking for someone to share that luxury with. However, random creepy things start happening such as a sudden switch from Tony talking to a cameraman to presumably Tony peering behind a tree at a house or whippers of a girl in the background that Tony gets up to stop. Someone that We'll share long walks along the beach. We just fucking shot! Um, there's also a random Toys R Us commercial, like in this tape, and a wedding, a part like a part of a wedding, I guess. I don't know. This is like a actual VCR. Like somebody must have just recorded over some shit that was pre-recorded i used to pre-record all the wrestlemanias and stuff when i was little you know what i mean or like random cartoons that i knew was not going to come on replay so i could see maybe some random stuff being on this tape but this is just weird the video ends with the girl whimpering again and tony getting up to basically shut her up now while this is happening, information on how to get into contact with Tony is showed on the screen. And later on, this video was actually debunked by a person called Scare Theater. He actually just reversed image searched Tony and found an actor, a, I think a British actor by the name of Darren Stone. And he is apparently a British actor and he is apparently Tony. So this was also debunked because I, I don't really understand why you would ever make a video like this. This is like a weird weird video to to hire this guy out to make um maybe it was supposed to be some type of like satire or weird like snuff type of film or something i don't really understand it but that was all the information i could find on this one so moving on to the last one on this list grave robbing for morons in the early 1990s a homemade vhs tape circulated around called grave robbing for morons it features a young man stuttily explaining how to rob graves without getting caught, what bones are the most valuable, and other grave robbing tips, or tricks I guess. To this day, no one knows who actually made this video or who this kid is. Over the course of the 27 minute long video, a stuttering kid in a leather jacket gives a detailed guide on looting cemeteries, showing off human skulls that he's apparently collected, offering advice on how best to deal with witnesses, and giving some stomach turning anecdotes about the sights and sounds of the trade. If you want to, you could grab it, exactly like I said, by the eyes, okay? There's going to be eyeballs still. That's why you wear gloves, don't think about it, think of it as a prop. As if it was from a monster movie, just something fake. Alright, uh, the eyeball sockets don't fit that well, okay? But when it's old, you can really push them in. Put your fingers, lock them around like that. It's going to smell, it might be, it might feel a little moldy. Don't think about it, think of it as a prop. On its authenticity, there seems to be a 50-50 split in opinions. While the kid in the video is clearly holding what appears to be a genuine, unbleached human skull, some of his advice, particularly about dispatching witnesses, seems to be a bit over the top, leading some to believe that this footage was just staged. Never leave witnesses. If you have to knock them out, knock them out so that way they think it's a dream. It's best not to kill, but if it's necessary, do it. On the other hand, those who have dealt with grave robbing cases and work with the deceased say that the looters' descriptions are honestly spot on. 
and at the tail end of the footage, the man in the video drops the nicknames of himself, the cameraman, and their grave robbing partners. Okay, this was made by, uh, by Anthony, because, uh, uh, um, well, as a matter of fact, let's forget the last name. It's Anthony and Gino, okay? This was made by us too. Um, we worked hard, um, also, Bucci, Bucci and Daco, I'm also helped it. Uh, at the very beginning. Me and um, Gino first opened it up though. All right, we opened it up. Anthony, Gino, Taco, and Pucci. Before taking credit for the rise of cemetery looting and promising that they'll continue to do it just for the fun of it. Now, the most eerie part of his sign off though is his promise to rob grave uh, of the famous magician Houdini. I, and it's, it's weird. He says, if you're watching this video, then you'll know who it was. He says, before flashing a hang loose sign and fading out. And our next big hit is Houdini. If you're watching this video, then you'll know who it was. Bye-bye. Now, interestingly enough, Harry Houdini's grave suffered lots of neglect and vandalism in the early 1990s, leading to rumors that his plot had been robbed. The rumors were never taken seriously and the magician's coffin was never checked for any missing remains. So to this day, we don't actually know if this kid did it, if they ever robbed it, because they never checked his body to see if his bones or anything was still intact. People just thought it was just a big troll. And Now the origins of grave robbing for morons have never been established and the mysterious man in the video has never been identified, never come forward, never said anything. The fact that the footage has been dubbed, torrented, and traded into oblivion has only further complicated the search for the truth. And basically, there's actually an entire website dedicated to finding more information on this video um, and basically trying to figure out where it came from, who these people are, if they ever robbed anything. Like, there is literally just a, it just wants information about this video if anybody has it. Because I'm surprised, I mean, especially with the way the internet is nowadays, if this was a giant troll, you would think that this kid, if he was still alive, he would come out and try to get some clout off of this, you know what I mean? Like, he made a super famous video at the end of the day, infamous, I guess, but I don't know. The fact that none of these people have ever come forward and said, like, oh yeah, I helped make that video is a little weird to me. I guess that kind of adds to the fact that it might be authentic, but I don't know. Uh, another person honestly to look at for this type of stuff is I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen it um John Bones he's like some dude he's got to be in his 20s and he basically he does the same thing I'm not saying he robs graves but I don't know he comes up he has a lot of human bones and apparently they're all legit and he's like basically a bone dealer it's really weird um I don't really know how I feel about it I guess I don't really care too much but definitely a little sketchy to be honest with you so Anyways, if you haven't checked out the rest of the series that I've done for these, make sure you check those out. Um, got new clothes on the website. Check that out. Um, trying to think of anything else I got. I just started the membership thing. If you want to, I, I mean, I don't really care. If you want to, though, shout out to you. We'll get a little name thing going at the end of the videos. And yeah, other than that, man, stay safe, stay dangerous, get laid. Deuces. I'll catch y'all soon.